second tree is there in the banyan seed potentially. Then it is said to be in Sathya state. And when it begins to germinate, it comes out benevolently. Then it is called Siddha state. Siddha means manifest. Sadhya means potential. That is, this is the seed state and this is the tree state of the same thing. <coughs> the whole universe exists alternately in these two stages. There is the Sadhya state of the whole universe and from that state it is germinated into the Siddha state of the worked out universe. Similarly, each of these devas have these two phases. The Sadhya state of devas, the same devas, they exist potentially in the seed. And then the Siddha state of devas, they come out, manifest. If I question, are, how many degrees are there on this board? We say no. But now if you ask how many degrees are there around this point, you say 360. So, where are they? Before, they are potential in every point of the board. But when the point is manifest, they are manifest. <coughs> so, where do the numbers increase? Numbers exist in space. That is the definition given by Pythagoras and many masters. Numbers exist in space as the intelligences working in space. So they are among the space devas. There are nine groups of space devas and they are known through these scriptures. And what is number one? You can ask. The answer is what you call it. That is the awakened construct. When you awaken from your sleep, automatically you feel it, I am. That is the birth of number one. It is the same to the whole universe or one individual. Where was this when you are sleeping? That is the answer given by Pythagoras and many of the masters and the ancient seers. When we are sleeping, where was this world? It was there, you are not there. Similarly, when the whole world went into dissolution or darkness or pralaya, where was all this? It was there. But there was no one to say it is there. You see, it was there. But we were not there, unfortunately, to say it is there. Because we have just pondered over this thing for some time. Mm -hmm. We are not to just learn or know or understand, but we have to apply the wisdom formula, not knowledge. The seed of our consciousness should be soaked in the juice of that wisdom. See what happens when seeds are soaked for two or three days in lemon juice. The seeds get the taste of the lemon juice. That is what is to happen to us, not to understand or not to get anything. What happens when the iron piece is touched with the magnet? 
The iron never understands what magnet is, but it becomes a magnet. It is transformation, but not knowing. So only through that process we can know what the scripture is, we can know what the creation is, we can know what you are and what I am, and what the background is. So it's not a process of knowledge, it is something else. And the masters who know the teaching method of that particular something, they are called the authors of the scriptures. There is a teaching method which is quite different from what we know. I was also a professor for 30 years in the university. But the process is like the blind man with the elephant. <laughs> we teach and the students learn, they teach and their students learn. So goes the world. That's not the process. I was a blind man to a big elephant called knowledge for 30 years because I was also a professor in a university for some time. My friend knows when I was a professor. Because for the first time when we met, I was unfortunately still a professor in the university. But in university, mankind requires another type of university, which is quite different from what we are having by the name of university. That's why I have great hopes about my friend who professes that he starts a university, international university, in the name Moria. And I find a second brother now. We are three. I have great hopes about these two brothers. And there, tomorrow, I hope of 20 brothers, 200, 2000, so that the university multiplies. A university is required for these things. And the present universities are not enough in their evolution to give us this knowledge. They are still primitive and paleolithic to give these things. We very badly need one such university. I think our brothers bring it up. <coughs> this is the number one I am. And you ask, what is zero? Pythagoras says, what is space? He questions. It is geometrically a growth. The space is unbound, but geometrically it is a globe. Because when you are there, it is there around you. As long as you are there, you form the geometrical center and it forms the globe around you. When you are not there and I am not there, space is there, but there is no one to define what is a globe. That is what Pythagoras gives in his 10th volume of teachings. There are 33 volumes given by Pythagoras. And he says, space is geometrically a growth, numerically a zero, and phonetically the one zero. So, what does it mean? Zero means space, one means I am. Every time. The Purusha, the peculiar person about whom we are talking, he awakens as I am in space. So he comes as one within the zero. And then he comes out as one out of the zero. That is, he realizes himself as an independent existence and he has the zero before him. That means, through ten steps, he prevails. The tenth is 
himself reproduced as his own image, whom we call the person on this earth, man. This is what the scripture means when it says, man is created as the image of God. Our God has created man in his own image and likeness. Of course, this is only the sixth key, that is meaning. There are five more keys. If we apply only meaning, we get only the meaning. The other things, we don't know what they mean. <coughs> so, there are in between nine stages. The tenth stage is himself as his own reproduction, or the son from the father. So, from zero or space, the one I am is born. Gradually he comes out and then he undergoes the nine steps of cosmic evolution. He is found as a material or physical entity standing with the physical body on this earth. So, having pervaded in all directions and dimensions, and pervaded this earth globe, that is the material existence, he stands through, he stands above and beyond this material dimension by 10 digits. That means he generates, he produces, he germinates, he creates, he reproduces and he procreates by the potency of 0 and 1, number 10. So through units of 10, he multiplies. Of course, we have to daily wonder sometimes. You need not repeat the stanza, but you have to repeat what the other of the stanza said, or what Pythagoras said, or Master Kuthumi said in his secret writings to Blavatsky. There are some passages about this in what you call the Mahatma Letters by K.P. Sinet. Mm. About the evolution of the anthropomorphic God, or man in the creation of God. So, this is something which we can partially understand at present. So by 10 digits, he multiplies. This is the reason why there are nine holes in the mechanism of the human body, nine functioning orifices. The tenth is there in the female mechanism of the body to reproduce. You see, the nine are common. The tenth is the orifice, the gateway of reproducing a change. So, the number guards work like this. The father and the mother, the brother, again the same numbers, and again so the arithmetical calculation is not man-made, but something copied from nature.
that this word also means thousand spokes and this word also means thousand units of one fourth but the normal it uh, you see dictionary approach is this is thousand eyes this is thousand feet mm -hmm. now we we'll proceed to the second mantra पुरुष ये वेद सर्व दट इज द फर्स्ट लाइन दट इज सेकंड स्टैंडा और मंत्र तेलु भी सीखा चल यत् भूतम यच्च भव्यम उदाउंडउंडउंडउंडउंडउंडउंडउंड It is like a very big compound around the house. Yet anney na thiro kati. Yet anney na thiro kati. So I do the splitting up also before I give the word. That's better. These are the words that are separated in the first one. Purusha, Eva, Idam, Sarvam. So these are the different words cemented yeah. with the, the grammatical. We have cemented. Mm -hmm. You see, for example, eva plus idam. It is cemented as eva idam, like that. So you can take the words separately, like this. The first line. And second line. These are the words. This second line, yet it becomes T when separated. Yet, Gautam is second word. Yet, let's cha, yet one word, cha one word. Obvious. So this is the split form of the words. The second line. अमृतत्स्य so this is the third the words in the third line now fourth line is it clear really mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. 
Вот он. Пас. Пас. Или пас. Вот он. Again, the same word. Yes, that would. Yeah. Yeah, me. Also. Yeah, me. Also. Thank you. Next. Hope you. Going to be. That means the future. The word opium means going to be, going to happen, we say like that. It is going to be like that. So it indicates that future. Yet Bhutam, that which is past. Yet Chavabhyam. And also that which is going to be. That means future. Okay. So this line reads about something that which was in the past and that which is going to be in the future. This is the second line. Now, we are proceeding in the process, therefore we have taken the first line and then the second. In a sentence we are proceeding. Next. Idam we have to take. Idam ji. Yes. This sarvam means all. All. So idam sarvam means all this. All this put together. That's the meaning. Purushama. Person, you know. Hmm. Eva means verily. Verily. That means exclusory, emphasis. It is only the person. All these things are only the person and nothing else. That is what he wants to say. Verily. Amrtatva means immortality. Amrtatva sya means of immortality. That is of immortality. Just take down immortality. Or you can say to Amrtatva is immortality. The same etymologically, the same word. Murta means master. Murta. Murta means master. That is death. Amrta means no death. That is immortal. That means eternity. Amrta 
Ishanaha. You take this word. Ishanaha. The meaning is the last. In Sanskrit, the word Isha, Ishvara, Ishana, they indicate God in his capacity of rulership, administration, and livelihood. So, when the God is to be understood as the one who lets the law of nature and the one who protects and the one who organizes and keeps the creation and things under the control of the law of nature and the properties of space, matter, etc. In all these capacities, the word Isha or Ishana or Ishwara are used. Just this, just as we have the word uh, Lord God in the Old Testament. Lord God is quite different from the God of thunder and lightning in Old Testament. And he is different from the God of the column of fire who was walking before the desert light. And he was different, different from the God who was seen in moon and sun. So in Old Testament we have seven different forms of God, but we think that all of them are the one, same. <coughs> and the God in the burning bush was next to the virgin. Next to him, we have the double sexed god, Yehovah. That is the solely lunar. Like that, we have seven gods. The second being the burning bush, or what they call Elohim. Elohim. Like that, we have in every scripture, there are many names to God, but they are not many names. They are the many aspects which are framed into names. So, the, whenever you find Isha or Ishwara or Ishana, that indicates the last. Last year in our lesson in Patanjali, we were referring to the Lord of all senses. There he said, Ishwara. You see, do you remember that we could look at two fellows inside? One is, who is conditioned by the capacity to see, to hear, like that, the sight the hearing, the smell, the taste and the touch. And the environment is attacking him from five sides at the same time, inside. So this prisoner is conditioned uh, by five, see, covans or intruders who want to kill him at the same time. In previous we have three fellows who want to kill him. But here we have three fellows who wanted to kill him. Five. Five. Yes, five. See, that is the environment in five parts, like the light, sound, etc. So this is what is called the negative I am, I said, who is always at the receiving pole and who is a prisoner and who is always conditioned by the environment, called the negative I am. And within him, 